Hey folks, I am going to show you how to set up memories for FM satellites using the ICOM IC2730. I will be using Chirp to demonstrate this setup. However, this will not be a full discussion on using Chirp, nor will it cover satellite operating techniques. If you are interested in these topics, please look for follow-up videos on the channel. With that said, I will show how Chirp interacts with the 2730 at the end of the video. So if that is of interest, make sure you watch to the end. All right, let's get started. Memories on the 2730 are organized in banks. Here you can see I have a bank dedicated to satellites, just as I have a bank dedicated to local repeaters. This is purely for the purpose of organization. Now let me point out something right off the top. All of the memories are simplex memories. There is no need to complicate the configuration with duplex memories. The 2730 has a right and left band, and we will be using each in a simplex fashion to make contacts. I think this is the first issue people run into when trying to operate or configure memories for satellite operation. We all hear how FM satellites are like a repeater in space. Therefore, we all try to program memories just as we would for a standard repeater. Stop thinking about it like that. Think about it like this. You are either using two radios or a full duplex radio, which is essentially two radios in one. One is used for transmit and one is used for receive, period. Keep it simple or, as I like to say, keep it simplex. You will configure memories for transmit and you will configure memories for receive. Reprogram your brain to this fact and you are on your way to working satellites. I will be showing how I set up memories on a per satellite basis. I think this makes talking about the setup more straightforward and easier to digest. The first set of memories we're going to look at are for the International Space Station. Now I keep two groups of frequencies in this list of memories. The first two memories are designated ISS Crew Down and ISS Crew Up. These are crew communication frequencies that frankly I haven't seen used in years. I keep them programmed just in case and also because the downlink frequency is the same frequency that is used for SSTV events. Memories 102 through 107 are the memories needed for regular operation. 102 is the uplink frequency using a PL tone of 67 Hz. And 103 through 107 are the downlink frequencies. We have five to account for Doppler shift. Again, I'm not going to deep dive into Doppler theory, but you can see each step or each memory is a five kilohertz adjustment. Memory 105, at 437.800 is the frequency you will see published as the downlink frequency for the ISS. 103 and 104 are higher frequencies used at the start of the pass, and 106 and 107 are lower frequencies used after the ISS has passed the midpoint. Next, we will look at SO50. The standard operating frequencies are defined with memories 109 through 114, and the approach is the same as the ISS. You can see I also have an additional memory, 108, defined with a tone of 74.4 Hz. This satellite has a 10-minute timer aboard, and it may need to be armed if it has been idle. This is accomplished by a two-second transmission with the 74.4 Hz tone. 
I cannot recall a time where I had to wake the bird up, but I have it programmed in memory just in case. The Tevel satellites are eight satellites that all use the same frequencies. So you only need one set of memories programmed for all eight birds. The approach is the same as the ISS and SO50, but in this case, the uplink frequency does not require a tone to get into the repeater. Finally, we will look at AO91. This bird uses a different type of repeater. It requires an uplink of 70 centimeters and a downlink of two meters. Therefore, we need to account for Doppler on the uplink instead of the downlink. You can see each memory on the uplink uses a tone of 67 Hertz. And you may also notice that the memories at the start of the pass have frequencies lower than the published frequency, and those after the midpoint are higher. This is opposite of the birds with 70 SEMs on the downlink. I will dive into that topic in the next video when I cover operating techniques with the 2730. But for now, just trust me, this is the pattern you will use for a 70 SEMs up and two meter down satellite. For those of you who stuck around, here is your bonus. When updating a cloning style radio, it is recommended that you always downlink your active configuration from your radio, make your changes, and then upload the new configuration back to the radio. Provided you have a working cable and the appropriate driver for that cable, Remember, these are not dumb cables. They have a chipset embedded in them that translates information from the USB interface to the TRS interface. Downloading and uploading via a menu item is really straightforward. Here you can see the interface of the radio during the cloning activity. After downloading, the radio will reboot on its own. This is a reminder that certain capabilities of the radio are not supported by Chirp and that they must be manually updated. After making your changes, pushing that new config to the radio is just as easy. Again, the radio tells you what is going on, as does Chirp, but on pushing an update, you must manually reset the radio. And there you have it. That is how I set up FM satellite memories for the ICOM IC2730. Remember, this approach will generally work for any full duplex radio, and I use it on all the radios I use to work FM satellites. All right, well, thanks for watching, and until next time, 7 3.